Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how to do an RNAV approach without a GPS. Now it's kind of interesting when people think of uh, RNAV, random navigation by the way, they think of it as, wait, isn't that just GPS? And it's not, it actually is based on the old school RNAV technology. And uh, we're going to be firing one of those today and actually having a lot of fun with it. These are non-precision approaches, uh, which means that we're going to do the best we can to get ourselves down to the ground, uh, basically with a stopwatch, if you want to kind of think about it another way. And of course, because it's not a precision approach, uh, we've got a lot of little things we're going to have to kind of fiddle with to kind of get all that going. So, well, uh, let's go ahead and figure this one out, shall we? So what we need to do today is we need to go ahead and program our little RNAV unit here. Now, this lovely thing here, this is a KNS81. Love this. I'm going to go ahead and pick my waypoint 2 here. And of course, if I want to use it, just press the Use button. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and fiddle with the frequency, but we need to identify what we're going to do. Now, the way that RNAVs work is actually super duper clever. Um, it takes a VOR, and what you're going to do is you're going to transpose pose it digitally to a different spot on the ground to basically enable us for the purposes of landing on it safely. So let's go ahead and get you a little view here and we'll kind of plan everything out here. So we're going to be going from Gardner. Um, we're going to be flying up to Keene today. And now we're going to be doing Keene and we're going to be using a navigational aid to help us out a little bit. I can press enter, I guess. There we go. Nice. So the navigational aid we're going to be using, of course, if we go over to little Keene on AirNav, is we have a choice between Gardner, Khan, and Michigan. And uh, but basically that is going to let us know which one of these different locations we're going to use. And ideally we'd want to use one that's a little bit closer. There's actually Clermont, which we can use as an NDB, which would be kind of fun for us. But honestly, I think that's a little bit of work. In the old days, we actually had a DME down here. And you can actually see real quickly EEN 109.4. This used to be a VOR DME. It's no longer. Uh, they've been eliminating these things like crazy, which means unfortunately this has actually gotten harder for us because now we have to rely on another VOR station, which in this case we're going to be using Gardner and hopefully we get enough altitude to do it safely for that purpose. So what we need to know is how far away Gardner is and where it is on the radio. Ta-da! We know that Keene is at 350, 23.1 nautical miles away. Uh, that's actually not too bad for us, so we can work with that. So let's go ahead and dial those numbers in here. So Gardner is, of course, 11695. So I'm going to go over here, click, 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 11695 like that. And of course, uh, we know that, uh, let's see, that looks pretty good to me. Data, our radial. Our radial we selected was the 350 radial. So I'll go ahead and change the big numbers first. That looks pretty good to me. 350. <laughs> That's the sound it should make, even though it doesn't. And of course, the distance today is going to be, um, what do we say it was? 23.1. Uh, Let's do 20. And we're going to go to 3. And of course, it's 0.1. So I'm going to pull this out like that. Click. I'm going to press the yeah, out. Looks good, looks good, looks good. I'm going to press use. Go ahead and pull that back. Go ahead and pull that forward. Make sure we're on the correct for our waypoint here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quick check a couple things on my little display. One thing I will do is I'll pop this over to the RNAV. Oh, we're not picking up the RNAV yet. Don't worry. We will once we get in the air. Don't worry. I got this. Trust me. So that's all set. Uh, we're ready to go as far as that goes. Uh, let me check. 116, that's incorrect. Uh, 116.95, that's where we're here to check. It's why, again, I go look over these things about 500 times. Uh, let's see here. Use. I'm going to go ahead and change frequency. Change frequency. Looks good to me. Use. Ah, now we're actually getting the data we want. Fantastic. See, you have to be careful with these things. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the mode that we're in currently. Uh, right now, we're in RNAV mode. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be changing into PAR mode. That one, RNAV approach. What this is going to do is this is actually going to increase the, um, basically, sensitivity of our unit here. So now we have a VOR station in Keene. Isn't that weird? Isn't that kind of... Anybody else think that's kind of weird? I don't know. I just find that kind of weird. So the other thing I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to switch this thing over to the RNAV mode because we are going to need it. And it's going to be dancing all over the runway or the uh, screen there, so don't worry about that too much. All right, so that was easy. Let's do the hard part. So now what we're going to do is we've created a new VOR station here in Keene, and we need to find Junpu. Now, Junpu is an interesting puzzle here because we know that Junpu is exactly on the 18 radial here. It is a distance of 5.9 nautical miles, plus 2.1, plus 1.9, plus 2.5 nautical miles from our brand new finger quote VOR station that we've offset using the RNAV computer on board. Kind of convenient, right? So unfortunately, I have to get all yield calculator. And I, if you ever buy a keyboard, make sure you buy one that's got the keyboard, the calculator on it. Plus 2.1, plus 1.9, plus 2.5. Delightful. Junpu, this position right here is 12.4 DME, and it's on the 1.8 radial. See how this starts to get a little bit tricky? Don't worry, it'll get more confusing in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and set this one up. So um, we said here that our radial that we're going to be utilizing, let's go ahead and get everything all kind of pre-programmed there. Let's see, we said the 1-8 radial. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to dial this into 1-8. So that's going to be 1-8. Whoa, ayo, be careful with your buttons, folks. 
It's going to be about right there. So we know that that particular radial is going to be right smack there. Now the problem is, and this is where things get challenging for us, is we need to locate this. And fortunately, once we get in the air, it's going to be a little easier. This will be a little more reliable. Basically, we're going to take off and do uh, this heading right here, and then acquire it, and then psh, and go straight right into it, right across Dunpu. Now the cool thing is, we know that Junpu, as you can actually see right here, it's at 12.9 is our magic number there, is going to be relatively quick coming. Now we have another problem we're going to face with this, of course. So locating Junpu, not our challenge here. Um, we're going to find that in about five minutes, not even. Our bigger challenge is going to be finding your other components. Uh, one of the things you can see here, Junpu, of course, is at 3,400 feet. Jurgi is at 2,600 feet. Sayak is at 1,920 feet. And of course, at 2.5 nautical miles to runway two, we have an MDA. We have a decision altitude of 843 today, but we're not an LNAV or conventional. <laughs> so unfortunately, our decision altitude is uh, quite a bit higher today. It's a uh, 1340. Basically, we're going to come down here, chill at 1340, and uh, basically hit our timer. And if our timer expires, then we're basically going to fly back around. You know, it's kind of one of those things. You do what you can do, right? So I'm going to go ahead and fly up here real quickly here and start getting all of our numbers all kind of pre-programmed here. Uh, we said uh, 3,400. I'm going to go set that up real quickly here. It looks pretty groovy to me. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. I like that. Let's make sure our trim is turned on. Looks pretty awesome to me. All right. That looks pretty good. That looks good. Looks good. Looks good. All right. So we are ready to go. Let's talk over our plan so that you're familiar with uh, what's going to be going on today. So we're going to take off. Or we're going to turn right. We're going to head about eh, 320 degrees. And we're going to intercept this radial, which is coming from our RNAV computer, which is being generated from the VOR station right over there. Kind of cool, right? And then we're going to fly it until we get to 12.9 RNAV DME. Um, that means that we are going to be over Junpu. We're then going to start our descent. And we're going to use our standard good old-fashioned old-school descent. We're going to be using 600 feet per minute. You're going, where'd you get that from? Well, our approach speed is going to be 160 or 120 today. 120 divided by 2 gets you about 600 feet per minute, which is going to be pretty smooth for us. Probably going to have to fly most of that one by hand, not going to lie. But hey, that's what we're here to find out today, right? It's all about the skills. Who's got the skills to pay the bills? I got the skills to pay the bills. You got the, got the, <laughs> that's really good stuff. So let's go ahead and make sure everything on the aircraft is uh, ready for ascent here, ready for descent, however you want to kind of look at it one way or the other. Go ahead and kick the power in a little bit here uh, and just kind of get it going a little bit. So I think we've uh, cooled off just sitting here on the uh, tarmac so long. So I actually have to wait for the stupid cylinders to warm back up before I can do this. Eh, it doesn't take them long though. <laughs> You know, give him a moment. Don't worry. I'll pause. You won't have to watch me. We'll let the engine warm. All righty. Let's go. I feel like this is one of those airplanes with the dirt sniffer landing gear. It won't actually uh, let you get in air until it's detected at the end of the runway. <laughs> I have a really fun story about this airport, too. Another day, though. Another day. Another day. So what we're going to do is, uh, just like I said we're going to do, is we'll go ahead and take off. i got to give us just a little bit more speed here. It's kind of a hot day, so... Whee! Gotta love those multi-engine planes. Whoa! So a couple things that we want to go ahead and uh, confirm. Uh, one thing, of course, is we need to make sure RNAV is operating properly, which I trust the fact that it is operating properly, so I'm not, not too stressed about that right now. There we go. Get a little bit of altitude. I actually had to turn on the air conditioning. This thing is uh, kind of... Got a little warm sitting here on the ground so long, but eh, part of the fun, as they say. I'd actually crack open our little cow flaps there just a little bit. All right, commence Operation Junpu. <laughs> I wonder who names these things. One of these days, I'm going to do a video dedicated to, like, the goofy names that people uh, name these uh, particular waypoints, just because they're kind of funny, kind of a thing like that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take our nice, gentle right turn, well-coordinated, 120 knots. Plenty of victory speed there. We'll go ahead and reduce to our max continuous here. There we go. It's about right on the RPM. We'll come down to about 35 inches of mercury. This is the base model, in case you were curious, by the way. Um, I'm not using the Grand Duke here. I'm not using the one with the big scary um, the gas turbines or anything along those lines. I do love that version to death, but this one is just its just simpler as far as like having to like, worry about stuff and kind of play with it. So the engines are warming up quite nicely. Uh, we're basically proceeding directly to that radial. Uh, if you want to try to visualize sort of what we're doing, let me go ahead and uh, grab, actually, while I'm getting myself terribly lost here, let me actually actually arm all my autopilots and stuff like that real quickly here. That looks pretty good to me. 
of course, at the size 3400. Fantastic. Uh, now that the autopilot is engaged, uh, now we shall go ahead and uh, show you what's going on here. So what we're doing right now is we just took off from Gardner, and we're basically, if you imagine where my mouse is, is we're kind of doing this right now, kind of heading this way. What we're trying to do is find this 18 radial so we can take a right on it and then head over to Junpu, like I said, at that 12.9 to let us know that we're crossing that particular position. Uh, right now, if I take a look over here on the RNAV DME, you can see we're doing about, uh, actually, we're going to slow down a little bit. We're coming up. We're moving pretty fast here. Uh, we don't need to be ripping along just the speed, not at this altitude anyway. There we go. Put that in. Go ahead and close up those cow flaps just a little bit. Not too much. It is a pretty warm day today. There we go. Of course, we could be doing this in nasty instrument conditions, but hey, it's some kind of fun to do it the fun way sometimes. So what we're doing now is our actual destination. If you look at that mountain over there, we're looking for this valley right in here if you want to kind of get a visual sort of a thing. But this works pretty well for us. All right. Are we actually cooling off in here? Yeah, we're 82. We're cooling off pretty nice. And we do have pressurization air working pretty well. Good time to go ahead and do all your idiot checks here. It looks pretty good. This needle will start dancing in a second. One, two, three. I'm going to go and give myself some alternate tango here. Do, 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 do. I always think of this as I like traveling by map. <laughs> There's 18.4. Oh, we know we're starting to get a little bit closer. That's okay, though. Good, looking good. 16.1. It'd be pretty funny if I accidentally crossed Junpu before I crossed Junpu. It does sound like something I would do. 14.3. Oh, we're going to have to square off here. We're actually doing too well. <laughs> so unfortunately, in my attempts to navigate poorly, I've been over-navigated here. And uh, Junpu is actually right here. <laughs> so I have to come to the left to basically uh, cut it off here because I want to intercept the radial, then get to Junpu. Otherwise, like I said, we're going to get there way, 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 way too quick. And I'm basically going to cut it off and not have enough time to be able to plan my maneuvers. Oh my gosh. Do you see that? Do you see that? My gosh. Sometimes I impress myself. All right. So Junpu is basically right around the corner. We can see uh, 12.9, 13. Remember when I just said jokingly a couple seconds ago that we're probably going to accidentally cross Junpu on our random direction to it? Well, Junpu is right there. <laughs> Not bad. All right, it's time to start our descent, as insane as that sounds. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to press navigation hold mode. And what this will do, of course, is this will grab onto this here and start navigating us down to the ground. All right. We've already crossed Junpu. Now it's ready to start our descent. So I'm going to go ahead and select our uh, minimum altitude here. 1,000. Oh, <laughs> no, I won't. I'll go ahead and select 1,340 here. Come down here. Uh, let's see. We said yeah, 1,340 is our minimum today. Uh, that's enough. I'm just going to leave it at 1,400. I'm not going to sit here and fight that. I'm going to shut off my altitude mode. I'm going to put an attitude mode. And I'm going to give it a couple taps. So one thing I like to do is pop on the flight director here. Let's go ahead and reduce our power. Go ahead and slam our cow flaps closed. Go ahead and make sure RPM is set. Come down, we're looking for about 20 inches here. I'm gonna go ahead and slow down just a little bit here. Okay, so now we're gonna start our descent into uh, Keen. And now, like I said, we're just gonna come down just a little bit slower. Again, we're using the R nav for the purposes of uh, getting us down there. So down just a little bit. Uh, that's gonna be 5.9, it's gonna get us to Yergi. Let's go ahead and do the math on that real quick. Uh, let's see here, that will be 2.1 plus 1.9 plus 2.5. That will be uh, 6.5 of the DME. So we actually have a pretty good amount of time before we have to get down to our next point. And one of the great things about non-precision approaches is you have the ability to step down to the altitudes. So one of the things we can do is step down to that 2,600 feet on our way. Like I said, uh, we've got three miles to get down to 600 feet. So uh, we can actually start doing that. Or not 600 feet. We have three miles to get down to Yergi, which is 2,600 feet. I <laughs> got it. All right, let's go ahead and dirty up the plane. Then you gear down, we're going to pop in our first click of flaps. We're actually going to have to increase power and open up cow flaps a little bit here because uh, this thing will start getting slow on us pretty fast. All right, I'm taking a look down here. I'm getting about 600 feet per minute, which is desirable. My airspeed right now is getting about a dollar and a quarter, which is pretty much what I wanted. That's actually perfect. I'm not complaining at all. <laughs> hey, sometimes it works well. Now, remember, we're waiting here. Oh, 6.5 on the DME means we're to uh, be basically crossed that initial approach fix. So I'm noticing we're descending too fast. So I'm going to give it a couple clips of uh, up here. And again, if you had a direct vertical speed controller, or if I was flying this by hand, I have a little more control, but this is fine. So it looks like, uh, yeah, it's a little low, but it's okay. Remember, we can't cross 2,600 feet until we get to 6.5 DMA. And I need to add a lot more power here. Let's go ahead and open up those cow flaps. We don't want to start getting too cold here. RPM comes up just a little bit. Looks good to me. Ah, it's about $1.20 right there. Slow it down. That's 2,600 feet, and we're not at 6.5 DME, so we're going to go ahead and hold off for a second here. So again, we're just holding off for a second here. We need to hold off, because remember, it's at or above Yerky is at 6.5 nautical miles. And give it a second, give it a second, give it a second. There we go, 6.5. I'm going to switch back to attitude hold mode. Remember, it will automatically remember your previous attitude here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come a little bit to the left here because then we are drifting a little and we're just going to get a little bit of downwards uh, kind of stuff. Attitude hold, altitude off. All right, so we're fighting with the autopilot. I'm just going to switch to manual mode. I don't care. I'm perfectly capable of a pilot. I will do it myself. There we go. That's a little better. Nice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start making our descent again. Again, go back to about 120 knots. There we go. Now we're coming down real nice. And our next one is at SEAC, which is uh, going to be 2.1 nautical miles from here. That's about 4 nautical miles at RNAV DMA. You can see we're about 5.1 there. Uh, we have to be at or above 1,920 at SEAC. Go swing to my left just a little bit here. We're starting to drift a little off course. Nothing bad, though. Again, it's it's about as accurate as RNAV has ever been, so I'm not going to fight it too much here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to let the nose come down a little more. Nice. Keep an eye. Again, continue doing your sweep here. So we're looking, uh, we're a little high here. Like I said, we're supposed to be crossing the SEAC at about 1,920. You can see that uh, we're at 2,100, so we do have to lose a little bit of altitude here. All right, RNAV DME. Uh, we have uh, 1.9 plus 2.5. Uh, not much, not much. So basically, uh, we're pretty darn close to the end of runway at this point. All right, our next point here, uh, we're looking to be about, uh, it's going to be... And we have to lose a little bit of altitude here. Um, like I said, our minimum today is, uh, we have that located already. Uh, 1,340 feet is our minimum. So we're just going to continue calling and floating down here. Not doing a chop and drop. We're trying to stay roughly the correct speeds here. And I need to come to my left just a bit more here. There we go. And just enjoy your descent. Oh, there we go. Getting a little more precise here. Swing this way. Approaching minimums. Whoa! You see some trees out the window? Because I certainly just did. <laughs> All right, 1,400 feet. Whoa! Turbulence, 1,340. Let's look out the window, and there's our runway. Nice! Not bad. Not bad at all. And that is a non-precision RNAV approach. So one of the challenges that you probably saw there is it's not the world's most accurate approach, which is uh, one of the reasons why it is a minimum. Uh, basically, you're working just about as accurate as your equipment can get here. But if you even look down at the little CDI there, you can see pretty clearly that it did a pretty nice job. Uh, most of my failure here was uh, not uh, flying the plane properly. But again, you can actually see we're pretty well set up for this runway here. <laughs> this is fun. The turbulence is absolutely terrible. I love stuff like that. And we're going to be a little easy on the power here. Leave a little bit of power in because uh, this turbulence is really terrible. Oh, landed it. And just like that, we were able to get all the way down to the ground with an RNAV approach without GPS. Isn't that kind of cool? Now, one thing we could have done, and of course our instrument pilots out there are all over this, is set a time. So as soon as we crossed uh, that initial approach fix of Yergi, we could immediately have set that time and actually check to make sure we're in a good spot there. But because we had such reliable DME information, we could actually basically make our way down, not by the seat of our pants, but by basically kind of making sure we hit each one of those step down altitudes as we go. Enjoy.